Hi, I'm Ray, G4NSJ, and this is a KW Electronics, the Vespa, KW Vespa transmitter, which is rather nice. It's not mine. I like the idea of the lift-up lid. The HRO receiver has a lift-up lid, as the CR100 receiver has. Nice to be able to get to things, although you can't get to the PA valve. That's in there. You've got to take the cabinet off and then the screen to get to that. Anyway, here it is. I've got a light bulb in the back. Now, that was my dummy load. Do you remember that in the old days, back in the 60s, the 50s? Stick a light bulb in the aerial socket. The reason I've got a light bulb is I have got a, a dummy load big enough, powerful enough. The power supply there is built in a cardboard box. Well, it's not a cardboard box chassis. There's a proper chassis in there. The cardboard lid is there so that's oh it's heavy that's heavier than the radio itself so this belongs to a friend of mine hello martin if you're around um and he wants me to restore it because valves are very different aren't they valves if you've not been involved with valves in the 60s uh, back in the good old days then you know it's something best left alone because of the high voltages i believe there are two settings on the power supply on the back there's a little switch I believe it's 550 volts or 750 volts for the PA valve the reason for that is on top band I don't know about these days on top band you were restricted to was it 10 watts or something I believe on top band because it was shared wasn't it a shared band with marine all the coast stations uh, night and radio and all that lot Humber radio Angle C radio. Do you remember all that? Excellent. Happy days. Oh, they're all on AM, of course. And so the top band, uh, 160 metres, was shared with Marine. So they wanted us to keep, I think it was 10 watts, keep the power down. So a little switch on the back. I have run it up and the bulb does light. Uh, so that's a good start. I don't have a microphone. So that's a bit of a pain. It's... Um, Single sideband, upper and lower, of course. Uh, CW, place for a key. And according to the... Now, I've never had one of these before, so I don't know about it. But according to the manual, AM. So I'm assuming you it's probably carrier plus one sideband rather than carrier and two sidebands, as your normal AM would be. I suppose what you do is switch to lower or upper sideband. And then here, there's a, a carrier switch. And a pot now that works you can turn the carrier on and then wind up the carrier level quite interesting that I'm not sure um, of the sort of layout of it all the design of it all I've got to look into that but, um, I've just turned it on and it's warmed up I've got the HT switch on the lower setting I'm just going to show there's a light bulb look actually it's a little reflect I couldn't find a bulb they're all LED now of course that's no good that'd be interesting load it up into an LED bulb wouldn't it <laughs> we go bang uh yeah, let's switch to uh, here we are oh there's the bulb look let's just load properly into the bulb lovely look at that can you see that all right I don't know whether you can see that bulb all right anyway it is a, let me see if I can show you there we are That's going nice, let's turn that off. I've downloaded the manual and had a look and it seems to be 1966. I thought this was 70s, but 1966, Stone the Crows, that's a while ago. Single sideband, because it was all AM, wasn't it, originally? Single sideband in 66. Do you remember, I'm waffling on and digressing now, do you remember the Heathkit SSB adapter? You get an AM transmitter and you've got this huge... Heathkit SSB adapter you stick the RF out of your transmitter into this adapter and it would suppress you know the carrier and whichever sideband and a friend of mine had one and it worked it did work it was a huge thing there was a lot of there were problems you did get some carrier going through with it anyway that's all another story I need a microphone I think that's a crystal yeah it'll be a crystal mic won't it a crystal mic I've got the plug at least so has anyone got a crystal microphone they can donate for nothing send it to me <laughs> there we are 
Um, right, I'm going to take some photos. I'm going to take the lid off the power supply in a minute so you can have a look in there. What I want to do is uh, run it up and uh, leave it on for a while and see what happens with the capacitors because really, I suppose, the original capacitors, 1966, the power supply capacitors, the smoothing, really should be changed. Also, the rectifiers are... What's in there? Is it a BY100? Who remembers the BY100? And also the flat, they weren't uh, selenium, were they? They were the ones with the fins, but the flat ones with the four tags. There's one of those in there. And I'm going to replace them with, what is it? Uh, one in four double oh six or seven, something like that. Right, okay, uh, I shall get the screwdriver out. There's the cardboard lid. Oh, there's dead spiders in there. Right, that's the cardboard cover. This is the power supply, goes into the radio, transmitter, I shouldn't call it a radio, should I, it's a transmitter. Now, I'll show you some close-up pictures in a minute, Look, these are the, for the high voltage supply, they'll be in series to get the, you know, the, the voltage up. Um, here, I don't know whether you, someone's, those two, can you see those two yellow ones there? Someone strapped those across another one underneath. So someone has been at this, there was possibly a bit of hum, and they thought, I'll stick those across there and make a right mess of that. Uh, yeah, there's the little, oh, actually they're not BY100s, they're slightly later than the BY100s. What was the next one up? The next, I can't remember, going back to the 60s a long time ago. That is bias, there's a little pot there, bias voltage. So that's all got to be set up properly. That, that little 4BA bolt there is loose. Someone's been at it. But uh, it's all in one piece, it all worked. That's the, the main training, of course. There's a choke there, a little choke, and uh, various other bits and pieces. There's a, a few pictures of it. You can have a proper close up look at it. Full of dust. First thing to do is get all that dust out of it and then change that rectifier right down the bottom there. I'll get a bit of tag strip I think and uh, what is it it's four connections it'll be a bridge so I'll get a tag strip and make a little bridge so in fact I think I've got a bridge rectifier that would be better I've actually got a, a bridge you know all in one package I can bolt that down to the chassis I don't like modifying things too much you know this is a 1966 radio or thereabouts and you know to take these out and stick modern ones in it's, it's not going to look right uh, i know no one sees it but uh, i know they're wrong mind you it's not my transmitter so martin you will know it's wrong you'll know that these have been replaced with bond equivalents okay uh right what's next i think next is to there's my bowl reflected what wattage is that it doesn't say what wattage is unfortunately uh yeah, I haven't switched this on to the high HT position yet. It's on the low. So uh, we'll leave it there for a minute. The thing to do now is to, I think, run it up. This is why people don't like working on valve stuff. Was it 750 volts HT? It's probably more than that around. I want to see if these get warm. None of these capacitors should get warm. Not even the slightest warm. Okay. So I think I'll set it all up again and... Uh, see what gets warm i don't know what value these are but uh i shall find out by the way talking of capacitors getting warm uh none of them should get warm if you've got a radio transmitter receiver valve equipment if any capacitors are warm even like a 0 0.1 0 0.01 decoupling capacitor say screen decoupling on a valve it mustn't be warm if they're warm they are leaking they're passing current that's what's causing the heat they're passing current and you don't want them to do that. I think I must have the wrong manual for this. It says in the manual, uh, what was it, 200 watts, uh, PEP, 150 AM, 150 CW. I thought, that's a lot. Strange valve, what was it, a 6HF5? I've just taken the cover off this. It's a 6146. Basic RF amplifier valve, no problem. I wonder how much they are. I should have a look on eBay. I wonder how much use this transmitter has had. That's intrigued me, that has that valve, what did I say, 6HF5 or something. 
I don't know. I don't know which manual I've got. Wasn't there a Mark One and Mark Two? I don't know. No doubt you'll tell me. I'm going to get a load of emails now, aren't I? It's Mark One. This is Mark Two. <laughs> so there we are. What is it? Mark One, Mark Two. What's in there? Another valve. There aren't a great deal of capacitors underneath that need replacing. They're mostly silver mica types. One or two little mullard. Do you remember the mullard mustard capacitors? A few of those there. And those what I used to call souffle capacitors. What are they? Cyroflex or something? They weren't replacing. There's only a few of those. They're horrible little things. I remember those in the 60s. Funny little things. Um, I've just been checking. The Mark I, which this is, the Mark I, uses the 6146 valve okay the mark ii which is what is it 220 watts pep on sideband 150 watts am 150 watts cw that uses the what valve was it again i forget 6hf5 the 12 pin strange valve so this is the mark one that settled that 6146 in the pa okay i think that'll do for now that's a kind of introductory video to the uh, to the transmitter, that bulb's blown there. Little Lilliput bulb, remember those? All LED now, isn't it? Dreadful. I don't like the transmit receive switch. I don't like that. That is, it's a wafer switch on its side. I suppose it's all right. It's, mm, that might need a bit of adjustment or something. Also the variable tuning capacitors their bearings will need a drop of Singer sewing machine oil, very fine oil, because that is the earth path for the rotor. Okay, the stator is insulated, obviously. It's the rotor that is chassis. There's no, on the old decent capacitors in the old days, you'd have a bit of braided, really like the outer of coax or something. So it's a proper soldered earth that would move around with the veins. Anyway, you're not bothered about all that, are you? Okay, that'll do for now. I shall, this is what, video one. Uh, yes, that had eight videos, the HRO. This, was this the R209? How many videos did I do on that? I can't remember, several. I wonder how many there would be on this. At least this works, as you saw. So keep an eye out for part two. <laughs> I'm going to run this up, get the dust off it first, run it up and go from there, see what happens, see what explodes, if anything. Look at that there, look. Crystal filter, it says. Crystal filter. Lovely. Four, five, five. Yes, anyway. Thanks for watching, as always. Have a look at the website, because uh, all the info about all this stuff is on there. Uh, G4NSJ.co.uk See you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.